All right, YouTube, welcome to part two of fixing the secondary air injection system on a LS1 F body, in this case, the 2002 Camaro Z28. Uh, so if you watch part one, you'll know that <clears throat> I failed a smog check here in Nevada. They're dumb, but you got to do them uh, for the secondary air check system, having the service engine soon light on and all this stuff. Um, Without repeating all the other things in the first part, I'll tell you where I am now. So I ordered a new uh, air injection pump, which I thought was going to be the only thing. Uh, but then I also ended up ordering and replacing these uh, check valves on here on the uh, that come off the exhaust manifolds. So why did I do that? I ended up did a little research, um, found out how the system works, and in essence, you turn the key on when the car is cold. It's supposed to kick this pump on which takes air from the breather element and then it pumps it into through this pipe it pumps it into the exhaust manifolds uh, and you have these check valves here which keep air only going in and the exhaust from coming out all right so uh, I knew the pump was dead because I hot wired it to the battery all right that's an easy one but then what I noticed was um, if you take this tube part here what you're supposed to be able to feel when the pump's running, what you're supposed to be able to feel is air coming out of this tube and going, in, and then if this is connected, obviously it'll go into the system. So I had taken this apart, and what I noticed was that uh, clearly no air coming out of here, but I could feel exhaust coming out of this way. So I knew those check valves were bad because they're not supposed to let that happen. So uh, I ordered them. I ordered the, the check valves from Rock Auto. They were, I think, $22 a piece. Um, and then the pump itself I ordered from uh, a seller on eBay because they had it a little cheaper with free shipping. It was, this was $98, I think, for the pump. Um, I also ordered, because I didn't know these check valves, I didn't know how exactly they, bad they were going to be to get off. So I'll try to explain this here. I ordered one of these gaskets here that will go if you have to take off this air tube off of the manifold. There's two bolts that hold it on down here. There's one and there's two over here where my finger is. So in the case that this didn't come off of this fitting, I was, I was prepared to go ahead and undo these bolts off the manifold and take the whole tube off. And on the back side of the check valve is just a rubber just rubber tubing that's not a problem um, I didn't wind up having to do that uh, I thought I was gonna have to break out my torch and you know take this off and then heat this thing up to, to get it all apart but I didn't and here's what here's what I did um, a lot of folks you know they swear by one penetrating oil or the other I don't what I swear by is vibration in use with pen any kind of penetrating oil in this case I just use WD-40 I had tried to wrench these off uh, just just cold uh, actually the motor was still warm but without any penetrating oil I think this is a 7 8 and this is a 1 inch so I had two big wrenches on here could not move either one of them so I sprayed it down with WD-40 and then I took one of these big wrenches and then for just a little while <clears throat> I just tap on both sides spray it again tap it a little bit more you know, just, just a few seconds on each side, and then same thing over there. And I did that over the course of maybe three or four days. Um, that vibration, I'm telling you, I've been doing mechanics, airplane mechanics, car mechanics for a long time. I'm telling you it's the key. It almost doesn't matter what penetrating oil you use. If you can, if you have room to get vibration onto your, your connector, it will help that penetrating lube uh, get into those crevices and dissipate some of that corrosion, some of that rust, whatever's holding it up. Uh, you've got to do that. So when I came out this morning, this is after about, actually I think it was only three days that I did that. Came out here, everything was, was cold. Uh, I was able to wrench both of these off with just hand tools, um, cold. And then it, obviously I put the new ones on here and I did not have to mess with taking this off the manifold, which I dreaded because, you know, these bolts down here are rusty as well. And you never know when you're going to tear off the, the bolt head on one of them. Then you got more repair work to do. 
I was prepared to do it. I just didn't want to. And that's why, you know, in that event, I, I had ordered, uh, well, I ordered, I thought I ordered two, but I only ordered one. So I have one of these. Um, don't need it now. Actually, if you need this, I'll just send it to you. I'll just throw it in an envelope and send it to you. Just let me know if you want it. So I don't need it. Um, so that's how I got those off. Um, when I put the new ones on, I can, you can see some of it there. I, I always put anises on uh, fittings like this. Uh, put a little little bit of that copper anises around the threads. And hopefully if I ever have to do this again or whatever poor schmuck has to do it, it'll be a little easier next time. Uh, so I put those on there, tighten them up, uh, put the rubber hoses back on here, tighten up the clamps. And then, without the air pump on, I fired up the car because I was curious. Started up the car cold, and now what I felt, instead of my thumb being pushed out of here, I actually felt it being sucked into here. So there's a vacuum on here, which makes sense because now that means the check valves are only allowing the air to go in one way, which is into the manifold and out to the exhaust, which would create a vacuum here. And that wasn't the case before. So after you do all that work, don't be surprised. I mean, you're still going to feel something out of here, but it should be a vacuum on this side. Then, uh, you know, I got my new pump here. Uh, I fitted it to the new bracket already. And just as a test, I hooked up this connector to the wiring on the car, uh, started up the car. And as soon as it started up, you could, you could hear this thing. It's like a little turbo uh, just whistling away. Uh, felt the air. I think this is the output. Felt the air, it was blowing out, you know, good and steady. So I know, I know that's going to work. One thing that I did, and this is what I'm going to recommend, because I, I saw some guys saying online, hey, when this happens, you buy your new pump, you know, whatever, you put it on there, you pass emissions, and then take the pump off. Because the pump sits like right here, actually, it sits like this, uh, right on, right in front of this wheel. So you know it's going to be exposed to all the elements as you're driving along. There's a shield over it and all that stuff, but... You drive through enough water, you're going to get water on this pump. Um, I RTV'd, and I think you can see it there at the base of the electrical connector. I RTV'd the crap out of that base. And then I'm also going to put RTV down here on the bottom of this, where the plastic meets the aluminum housing. Because I took the old motor apart. I wanted to see. And what you can see here is here where the electrical connection comes in, you can see corrosion has worked its way inside of this. And I see corrosion right there on that grounding uh, terminal. And I feel like water will drip right through here, right through that ineffective gasket there, if you will, through the housing. And I think that might be what has shorted this motor out. Also, over here is the pump sits like this in the car, right? Here's the bottom. You can see there's corrosion right there on that fitting. Uh, the rest of them looked like they stopped. The seal uh, stopped any water from getting in the housing. But right here, you can tell water has set right here in the bottom of this thing. So that's why on the bottom of the new pump, I'm also going to RTV uh, around the bottom of this whole thing after I get it mounted. That way I don't smear it all over the place. And I think that's going to help this thing last much much longer because uh, I don't want to take this off after I pass smog I you know what a pain right and then you're gonna have the service engine soon light on all the time like I have so that's what I'm gonna do and then uh, after I get this pump hooked up I know the system's gonna work right because this is just about all there is to it except for a diverter valve and a solenoid up there behind the cowling but um, those seem to be I think those are fine I, re I really do um, so after I do this, I'm going to reset the computer. I'm going to do the GM drive cycle, which has you do, uh, you know, a cold start. You sit there and let it idle for five minutes. You go out to the highway and drive at 55 for, I don't know, five miles or something. You can Google it. There are GM drive cycles all over. And that's supposed to help, you know, speed the computer through the, uh, all of its tests. I think there's eight of them, and you have to have seven completed to pass smog. So... That's what I'm going to do. Hopefully it works. And if you have any questions about it or if you want that, that gasket up there, let me know. And thank you for watching as always.